Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Well, it's another beautiful day outside. Really gotta love spring. It's nice without being too hot. Anyway, we won't be able to do today's project outdoors, so that's why I have all the windows opened. Well, today's project is going to involve all of this. Now, I've had a Sony USB player for quite a while now. The annoying thing about it is that, just like with most of today's MP3 players, you need a USB jack to charge it. And uh, basically that means that uh, the manufacturer wants you to turn on your computer and have it running all day long in order to charge up your MP3 player. Well, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to build myself a USB charger. So, uh, I found myself a manual in the internet. Now, this is all German, so there is no point in giving you the link and all that. I'm sure a quick search is going to have a lot of helpful results for you, too. Anyway, this is the USB front plug-in jack that uh, I pulled out of that Epson printer. And there is at least one useful part in that thing. And we're going to use that. I don't know why this stupid camera is not focusing on that, but uh, anyway. Also found myself a plug-into-the-wall power supply. This has a continental Europe-style plug on it, obviously. It's one of these power bricks. And the great thing about it is it has screws. So you can just screw it open. No need to cut in, cut the housing apart or anything like that. Other great thing is, it has exactly the kind of transformer that we want. This is a 8.5 volts AC, obviously, power supply, transformer, 500 milliamps. And uh, in order to do, uh, in order to build this all properly, you will need a transformer that has at least 8 volts. But you can go up all the way until let's say 15 volts, that's not going to be a problem. But 8 volts is the minimum. So 8.5 volts really is perfect. And there it is. The problem is, space is going to be a real problem. This compartment up there is all we have. Down here there is no space and um, obviously this compartment right here is going to be filled with a transformer. So I will have to build a circuit that uh, fits into uh, the part up there. That's going to be a bit tricky, but uh, I think we can do it. And a couple of hours later, here we have the finished circuit. I am going to give you a schematic later on in this video. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. AC comes in up there, goes through a secondary fuse. That's, of course, always important if you want to be able to run these things without watching them all the time, without having to worry about them. Little rectifier. It's made out of separate diodes because I didn't have a rectifier bridge that was small enough to fit into here. There is a 5 volt regulator chip, and that goes into the USB jack over there. Also have a little power LED. Seems like I accidentally put in a super bright red LED. Uh, the resistor, voltage drop resistor already has a, a value that is a bit too high because I didn't have the right value. Um, and it still is pretty bright, so oh well. Anyway, um, as you can see, uh, SMD miniature capacitors definitely do make sense because uh, I did have some problems fitting all the standard size capacitors into here. And uh, you can kind of see your, this part right there, that is where the screw goes. There's a little mount thing going all the way down, so you couldn't put any components there. Underside is, uh, well, my usual technique of uh, making up the traces out of solder, as you can see. And, well, as you can see, got the circuit hooked up to the oscilloscope, and uh, it does look kind of funny because the trigger doesn't really want to lock on the signal, but um, 
as you can see, we are getting a straight line, so that's pretty good. And um, that is, of course, without a load connected. And uh, I did, in order to test it properly, I did fabricate a load. I um, have a USB cable here, which has a 10 ohm resistor connected to it. And um, there it is, as you can see. Here we have the plug. And I can just plug that into here. And the resistor causes a current of uh, 300, 300 something milliamps. And uh, well, as you can see, it does change quite a few things. That's of course a consequence of having not enough space for some decent uh, capacitors, some decent filter capacitors. We're still getting something um, something similar to 5 volts, but as you can see, uh, it's just uh, it's basically just the rectified AC uh, with the with the peaks being cut off um, by the voltage regulator. No more filtering, so <laughs> it's uh, well, it's not quite perfect. Chip does get quite warm, but it doesn't get terribly hot, so. That should be fine. And uh, you can see the LED still lights up the way it did before, so there is not too much of a terribly huge voltage drop. And as you can see, the circuit board is now in its place down in the tiny little compartment in the transformer housing. That was one extremely tight fit. But it's all in there, as you can see. And uh, here is the front. The hole for the LED, for the power LED, ended up sitting too low. So the LED uh, ended up being, uh, well, it's, it's, it's kind of bent in a rather unhealthy looking way, but it should work. And uh, there is the hole for the USB jack. And uh, that uh, the, end, the, the USB jack ended up sitting a little bit deeper inside of the housing than I thought, but the plug does fit and just about manages to lock into place, so that, uh, that all works fine. And uh, I, to melt the hole, I use the soldering iron. It's uh, always kind of an easy method. Have a have an old tip for the soldering iron that is... Uh, totally shot and I can just use that to melt plastic. So, of course, always important to open up the window while doing that because you don't want to breathe those uh, molten plastic fumes. But there it is. So I can now put it all together. Oh yes, look at that. It's working. Well, there it is, and as you can see, I had to take it all back apart because um, I ended up having problems with the data connections in the USB cable. Now, what I had done in the first design, as you can see by the on the schematic that I have right here, I hooked them up to the ground because it just appeared to be a good idea, and because I read that some Apple products, like the iPod, actually require the data connections to be grounded in order to, uh, to be able to charge. So I thought it might be the same with a Walkman. So I grounded the data connections and um, it didn't work. The uh, Walkman just totally didn't want it to know about it. It just wouldn't respond. It didn't do anything whenever I plugged it in. My Samsung mobile phone, which also allows you to, char to charge it through the USB, um, it, it was charging, but very slowly, and it was a little confused. At first, it, uh, it popped up a menu uh, asking me how I wanted it to connect to the computer, which uh, obviously didn't work because this is not a computer. So what I've done now is I've disconnected the data uh, connections from the ground. They're now just free-floating, not connected. 
And now, Walkman works. I haven't tried the mobile phone, but uh, to be honest, that doesn't interest me because I do have a charger for the mobile phone. I only need this one right here for the Walkman. So now I can finally put this all together. Now there is no provision to hook up an ammeter to find out how much current the Walkman is taking. But I hooked up my oscilloscope to the output again. And as you can see, apparently the Walkman does take quite a bit of current. Because uh, we are having these little dents in our straight line of uh, stabilized voltage. Of course not as bad as it was with that load resistor, as I expected. But, uh, still, you can see it's not exactly perfect. But once again, space is limited, so I can't make it any better. The voltage regulator does get pretty warm, but you can still touch it, as you can see. Ideally, I'd uh, connect it to a heatsink, but uh, once again, not enough space. And there it is, the finished product. Looks quite neat, I have to say. The only thing left to do is to change that label on there, because obviously it's not an AC to AC adapter anymore. And there it is, the circuit. As I already said, these two connections are optional, data to ground. It depends on whatever you hook up to the charger. I replaced that capacitor right there, doubled the value, but uh, that didn't improve the voltage uh, stability, so oh well. And this is how you hook up the USB jack. Thank you for watching, and see you again soon.